Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a webinar, a webcast, an online show, um, whatever you want to call us. Uh, we're here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We also record our shows every week and we post them on our website so you can go back whenever it's convenient to you onto our website and see all of our shows going back to the very beginning, um, which is January 2009 was our first show. Um, the show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your colleagues, friends, whoever might be interested in any of our topics. Um, but we do a mixture of things here. We do presentations, mini training sessions, book review sessions. Basically anything library related in any way we um, want to have on the show. And we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on the show sometimes, and we sometimes have guest speakers that come on. And this morning we have a mixture of that, which is nice. <laughs> um, all across the table from me, which we're going to turn the camera a bit here so you can see, is Holly. Holly Wolt is here um, from the Nebraska Library Commission. And what's your title now? Um, what are you? I, I need to read it myself. <laughs> I'm the Library Technology Support Specialist. Okay, so I work yes. with public libraries in Nebraska with the technology issues in their public computing centers. Yeah. And um, next to her also, she's going to move over here, is Sally Snyder, <laughs> who's our uh, Children and Young Adult Coordinator, Services Coordinator. And a couple of months ago, I can't remember when it was the previous, the coding session. In January. In January, they came on and did a session separate from Encompass Live, not part of Encompass Live, um, a separate Which webinar that we did on um, coding um, for with kids and teens and wearables. And it was um, part of that was it was really interesting. And we decided to bring it on um, part of that wearable technology is part of the show, which is just one segment of this longer show about coding and a whole bunch of other types of uh, computer-related robot things. It's really cool, actually. <laughs> uh, we decided to break out this one and do a specific, uh, specific show just on the slide about wearable technologies um, and how libraries can get into that. So today we have, right to my left, is Dagan Valentine Hello. and on over next to him, Brad Barker, and they are going right. to um, tell us all about these wearable technologies. First, I think, handing over well, to I was just going to uh, give you some information about who uh, uh, Dagan and, and Brad uh, and where they're associated with, but Dagan Valentine is a graduate uh, student with uh, the University of Nebraska and he works specifically with Nebraska 4-H. And uh, Brad Barker is a, uh, what you said was a 4-H uh, science and technology specialist. Correct. So um, I wanted to uh, add on to what Krista was saying, a couple of things was um, the reason we're doing this wearable technology uh, webinar on Encompass Live today is that there was just such an overwhelming interest in it uh, from our first webinar. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, wanted to maybe just do a highlight on, on the, these activities and things that are available. And um, from the very first presentation was with uh, Dr. Jenny Nylander with the University of Nebraska, and she um, really sparked a lot of interest with that. And Sally and I also want to remind all of you who maybe are familiar with the first webinar or familiar with our website, we do have a resource page available for STEM-related um, types of resources for youth, for library staffs to use for uh, coming up with programs and projects in their library. So that's a plug. We'll come by it later, but we just wanted to give a plug. So I think uh, we're delighted to have. I know well, we're delighted you. to have you, and uh, thank you for coming, and uh, I think we're ready to let you go with it. <laughs> it's great to be here. Um, so we're going to discuss today wearable technologies and e-tech styles and kind of looking at projects for libraries, um, things that you might be able to do with uh, your community members in your library. There we go. So um, I'd like to give you just an over, uh, so today for the, the short hour that we have together, I'm going to give you a short overview of our WearTech program that uh, we're writing, and uh, Brad will explain some of those components. Um, we're going to, we've kind of broke into some projects for kind of the K-5 area. Um, after that, so once you've seen some of the projects, I'm going to show you some of the resources that uh, we put together, some online resources, and then a couple, um, an Excel spreadsheet I put together for components and costs. And then we'll look at 6, 8, 9, 12 projects, um, and then we'll wrap it up with some paper circuits. And, um, please feel free to um, ask questions throughout um, if you need more explanation on something or um, you'd like me to um, kind of look at it look at it a different way. 
happy to do that. And I'll just let you know, um, all these resources that he's talking about, the Excel and the, this PowerPoint, anything else related, any documents you see, will be available after the show as well for you to have access to, to download and use for your own reference. So, <clears throat> so uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us. So the, uh, the grant that we have is funded through the National Science Foundation. I'm the PI on the grant, so I'm working with Jenny, uh, Dr. Melander. Um, we have others from um, engineering and other departments helping us put together this, this curriculum. So the original goal, and well, still is the goal of the program, is to develop about 40 hours of curriculum around wearable technologies for uh, late, late elementary school students, so grades three through five. Although we have crept up a little bit, so we are doing programs with 6th and 7th graders now as well. Um, so the, the idea is to provide a way for, for you to develop projects um, using wearable technologies and really learn about engineering design, circuitry, and, and programming. So those are our, our main goals of the, of the program, but again, um, centered, up, centered on wearable technologies. And, and the way this came about is uh, we have been doing robotics in, in 4-H for about eight years now. And it's been grow, going really well. We, uh, for our first LEGO League competition, we have over 100 teams. We have about 900 students that participate. But traditionally, year after year, what we found is we have mostly boys. About 70% of the participants are boys. Um, and so that's a great way for them to enter the STEM fields, to get exposure to STEM. But we wanted more females to, to be interested in STEM. So when we combine um, the artistry of the wearables with the technology, the computer programming, the engineering design, it's a great pathway, we think, for females to enter the STEM fields. So that's, that's the reason why we chose wearable technologies to bring females into the STEM. Um, the overall way the program is supposed to work is we are working with the uh, 21st Century Learning, Community Learning Centers uh, throughout the state of Nebraska. And the idea is we bridge formal and informal learning environments. So ideally, this curriculum will work where the, the teacher, the certified teacher, will introduce the concepts in the classroom. And then in the after school time, the, the students would be able to do a deeper dive into the curriculum. So they'll have more time to work on their projects and really spend more time with them things they wouldn't necessarily be able to do in the classroom, they'll be able to do in the after-school learning environment. So, so that's the model that we're, we're looking at, we're researching for this, this grant program. So, um, so what we're doing today is a little bit off of what the original intent of the grant was, and we're more than happy to do this, but um, th these kind of activities are, are a little bit different, I would say, than what we have in our, our core curriculum. So, uh, but we're happy to be here, and I'll let Dagan continue. <laughs> um, so, taking a look at some of the projects, um, so kind of my intent was to generate some ideas um, and just kind of be a spark for creativity. Um, hopefully, you'll see um, some opportunities or some or some potential um, for connection, connecting some literature with um, some amazing wearable technologies and e-textiles. Um, in the K-5 um, area, didn't do too much with wearables, um, just kind of focused on the skills for um, e-textiles and the, the skills that would eventually get to wearables. Um, so we chose The Very Lonely Firefly um, by Eric Carle, a classic book, mm -hmm. um, a classic author. And so here's just a picture of the project, and um, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to show it, so Brad's going to show it. Here. Go ahead and move the camera in. Just pick up the whole camera. The stand. Yeah, there you go. So, so here's the project. And so what we have here is a power supply. We have conductive thread. Um, again, we have a positive and a ne oh, positive and a negative connection here. Go into a button, uh, and then when we when we push the button, we complete the circuit, and we have a light that will turn on. I don't know if we can. There we go. Yeah, there you, there you can go. See now it. you yep. can see it. Yeah. You can see it on the camera, yep. So here you can see our conductive thread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of dark. Yeah, it's kind of hard it's to see. Dark, but, but right. Great. And I'll talk more about the components and um, things in, in just a little bit. 
Um, so that's just kind of um, so a lot more artistry and creativity. And I've just kept it simple. So here you'll see um, three components, uh, three pieces that um, make up this uh, project. Um, you could even do it with two, and uh, I think I have one like that. <laughs> um, so this is just one example. Um, this is one I created just um, based off of the, um, the cover of the Eric Carle book. Um, one of the reasons that this uh, idea of this book came about was because Spark Fun, um, the creator of um, these technologies and, and these components, um, they have a pre-made project that's all ready to go, and they send you the felt, the materials, uh, the thread. They send you everything to do this project that you see here. Um, and so this is, I'm glad we have a camera because they do flicker like fireflies. Um, and so here's a picture of the um, components, what they look like, but we'll um, show you a little closer. Do they see, can they zoom in? So you can kind of see they're flickering like you caught fireflies. We're going to hit the lights here a minute to make it a little there more we obvious. Go. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So it's a pretty easy project. Um, sewing wise, uh, so some skills in sewing. Um, the instructions are really clear, and I'm going to show you those um, also in a moment. So here's uh, the Firefly kit. Um, and I have these links on a, another page. I can show you that now. Um, I put all of the links that are on the website on one page. So here's from all the slides. These are the actual, just in case the links didn't work on the PowerPoint. Here are the, here are the um, actual links to these things. Um, so the Firefly kit. Um, so there, you'll have the price here, and um, but you can see they send you everything you need to do the project. Um, I um, in this one that I made, I didn't use the kit. Um, I had access to all of these components, so I just cut the cut the felt myself. Um, used these components, um, not um, together like this, and um, it. It's cheaper to buy the kit um, by a dollar and a half uh, when I did the math. So, um, so it's nice to have that. So that's so you could just get the kit if you wanted to. Um, I can see if you're doing this as a project with a bunch of kids, it's cheaper the more you buy. Right. More kits, yeah. It, it is, and also if you're with an educational institution, you get an educator discount. Ah, you just have to, yeah, you have to go up there and register, go to the mm -hmm. site, register as an educator, mm -hmm. and you will get a discount. And um, they have great instructions, um, very clear, step-by-step, -step, um, just uh, very thorough instructions on how to do this. Um, most of the things from SparkFun are very clear, step-by-step -step instructions. So that a lot of support for you, even if you don't know what to do, um, using, these, um, using these will help you out. So there I have my interest, luckily. Oops. So I just want to spend a little bit of time here. So this tells you what you need. So even if you didn't get the, um, the kit, um, it gives you the, the list of components. Um, and so you'll see it has pretty clear instructions um, and or, uh, ex explanations of the components and what they are. Um, down in the instructions, um, you get step by step. So here. Um, it's telling you, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, did I, uh, did you put down something? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, what I decided. We've had some issues, um, accessing the, the SparkFun, uh, site this week, um, so this is mm. some of what's going on here. And, and it does exist in the background, there are the pages, but we seem to not be able to get to them. <laughs> Wait another second. It doesn't say it's doing anything. Mm -hmm. I think 
to me to try to walk him sure. through? Sure, yeah. Okay. So, so Brad, will, Brad will walk <laughs> you through kind of the instructions, but the instructions are there. Um, if those instructions aren't there, Brad, Brad will clear up any, any really? cloud. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're going to minimize the word docs that you get the camera. Okay, so so this is the back of the of the project here. You can see these are our LEDs, and we have four LEDs. And when I turn it over, you'll notice we have a power supply, and we just have a um, three three volt, volt battery right here. We have an on and off switch, so I can do that. And then you'll notice we have the the negatives on this side and the positives on this side. Um, so, so that's our power supply, and again, everything's connected with this this thread, this conductive thread. So uh, this thread will actually conduct elect electricity. So what you're looking at in in whole is a is a circuit, and each one of these lines over here will go to one of the LEDs. So what we need, oh, and the other component we have on here is called the tiny lily. There's a lily tiny. Uh, they call it a twinkle. A the twinkle. Show. Okay, but <laughs> lily twinkle. Lily twinkle. <laughs> um, so anytime you see a component that has purple and kind of looks flowery, it's going to have lily something in, to, in the name of it. So this is a lily twinkle. And what this really is is a very small microcontroller that, ha it, that is pre-programmed to send electric, electric signals out in different patterns. Um, and so what we have here are pins, these, these circles on the outside, and that's what we, we hook our thread up to. So down at the bottom we have a a positive right here and a negative right here so that allows us to complete the circuit with our power supply um, and then over here all these different numbers represent a different blinking pattern so um, on this side we have a number three and that's going to go to this LED right here so you can see that's blinking and then so this is a, a series circuit it looks like is that right? Parallel, parallel circuit parallel right here parallel. okay uh, so we have our, so this is actually our positive line, and it, it continues to the next LED, which is right here, and you can see that's blinking as well. Uh, and, and so we just do that with each one of these LEDs. So this is um, port one, which is, again is going to have a different blink pattern than three, and they all come back down to this negative, so that, that will complete the circuit. So yeah, so that's how we built that project. So it finally loaded while Brad was talking. So um, as he was explaining how how to sew and where to sew each one of those, the instructions online are are really clear um, and step by step. So it tells where to put the components, um, where each one goes, um, and so this one, you know, if you're if you have students or community members that need a lot of support when they're doing a project, this is one that you'd be able to do. That first project I showed you, that's one I just created and copied the front of the page. So I didn't have much help with that. So um, other than using the, the cover of the book. So and then here it shows how to show um, hook those all up. Really great instructions um, and how to finish it off. Um, so spark fun. I'm here, and I have those in the link list, and um, we're going to look at a couple of other links, hopefully, um, in a little bit. So that's for a fiction book. Um, the, so as stated before, the resources from this webinar, we have the Excel file with component list um, here. So if you got that Firefly kit. Here's you know just one. It's twenty bucks, nineteen ninety five, and then here's the um, here's the source or the link for it. Um, if you have, and it also included instructions if it had instructions on how to do it or how to kind of support you in doing this project, um, there's this one, uh, that link there as well. So that Firefly I made, so here's all the parts, that, all the things that I used, even the felt, if you have it, or here's an Amazon link for you. And here's the two instruction pages that would help you the most with just doing a basic circuit um, to do that, and including a button is the, is the other one. So um, I've tried to include all the things that you would be able to do a project similar to, or same as um, the one that you saw today. So, um, and then just the outline for this presentation, I have it on there as well, um, just for your reference if you need it. Um, the K5 project for nonfiction, um, 
This is uh, the night sky. Uh, it's an introduction to stars, planets, constellations, so uh, science-based um, one. And so here, this is a project I put together. There is not uh, pre-made instructions or anything for this. Um, it's just something I made for the Big Dipper. So here's um, a bunch of stars. Here it is lit, lit up. Brad's going to show you. Um, and so this one, I don't have a twinkle or anything. It just simply turns off and on. So something easy, I used uh, the uh, fabric paint um, to help me with this one, um, and LED um, thread and one uh, battery source. So those are all pretty simple and um, easy to do. The sewing didn't take very long on that project. Okay. So for those type of projects that are very simple, kind of geared towards the elementary, middle school, um, SparkFun includes uh, some instructions on basic sewing, um, which are great. It kind of tells you how to work with their conductive thread. Um, it has a steel, and it's steel lined thread, so that's what makes it conductive. And so they're able to use those. Um, so is it different than sewing with normal thread, just non-steel thread, I guess? Uh, I I've never sewn before. I, so you don't you know? know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Even when I was in, uh, I spent some time in Armenia, and you buy pants that are, um, they don't cut the inseam, they just, they're always long, like mm -hmm. four inches too long. You have yeah, to, you have to hem up. And I always have a neighbor or friend or <laughs> somebody do it. I, I don't know how to do this. As a seamstress, yeah. I would say it's probably stiffer. Yeah. Probably yeah. The same. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good happen. So um, lighting up the basic. So this goes through um, how you might want to um, use the thread. So they suggest doing doubling up the thread. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't click on anything. It's like it's jumping to something. Else. Oh, yes. okay, cool. Um, and so here, um, I didn't use a hoop. I think it's called a hoop, right? No, there it is. Embroidery hoop. I didn't use an embroidery hoop. The uh, um, felt is pretty stiff. Um, Ann O'Connor, our um, curriculum specialist, is working on the project. Um, she, she's found that um, younger kids are able to manipulate it stiff, um, where if you use cotton, sometimes it's harder to, because it folds over on itself. But felt's pretty good for um, most of the applications. So they explain in pretty good detail how you need to sew it. So three loops around each component, um, how you go from one to the other, um, shows you some pretty good diagrams on what to do and how to finish off, how to tie off your thread so that way you have a good connection between each of the components. Um, and making sure that they don't cross. And there's a picture down here. And so because you are using a circuit, um, so if you think of wires in a circuit, you don't want them crossing, so you have to do the same thing with thread. So when you're creating a project, you have to think of design it in a way that makes it so that way the threads won't cross, otherwise you short it out and your components won't light up. So there are some of those components to, uh, aspects. Yeah. Just what I thought I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's uh, so those instructions I think are really clear and would help out um, most people working on these. Uh, the next one for this project with the Big Dipper, um, the LDK2 um, Lily De Design Kit this is LDK. Um, they show you how to do something in series, uh, or excuse me, in parallel. So these you see are in parallel with the strands or in series if you wanted to. If you do do something in series, um, you have to have more power just because of the voltage drop between each component. Um, so most of the things that we do in our projects are going are parallel. It's easier. So that's one of my recommendations is if you're going to sew something, sew it in parallel. <clears throat> and again, uh, great instructions on <clears throat> excuse me how to do that. Remind you not to cross the threads. Um, you can turn or twist them as long as you respect the kind of positive and negative flow of um, electricity. So excellent instructions on SmartFun. Um, I, I will say we're probably 90% of our wires get crossed are when you tie your knots on the back mm -hmm. and you don't clip your strings, then they will mm -hmm. kind of flop around. So um, we use fabric group glue to glue those down as well. So we clip them and glue them down so they don't come out. So, there's a series circuit, so notice they used two battery sources. They needed six volts in order to um, complete that. 
and the voltage drop between the red. The yellow pulls more power than the red. Um, so, a couple of tidbits I learned I get while I was working with this. Um, so I sh showed you those, and then the um, third one, um, for that project specifically, you needed um, to know how to use a button or a switch, um, which was in the first project. Um, so this shows um, if you do buy a button or a switch, if you choose to use those components, it shows how to include those within your circuit, um, so that way they, they work. Um, and so here's, you know, it's coming from the positive pole um, and going to, so here it interrupts the electricity going to this first LED. So, and you don't have to have it in the negative. So here they're doing it in, uh, in two of them. So there's what it looks like. So here on the negative side, you don't have to put anything. You're just interrupting the flow of electricity um, from one pole to the other. So that's kind of what it looks like. Um, and that works. It's pretty cool. Right. So unlike a LED where you go from your power supply positive and negative, with the button you go positive and then positive again. So that's just the difference with the button or switch. So cool, um, cool um, options that you could use. Um, I think as you add more components, the difficulty um, goes up, sometimes exponentially depending on what you're using. So, um, you know, the lower levels, uh, most of the projects I used were um, simple, um, not very many components. Uh, sources for the components, there are two main sources that I've found. Um, one is Spark Fun, which we've um, visited um, often and you've seen. They do have a whole section on um, all of their components for the wearable technology. So here, just, I didn't, I didn't use a tenth of what the what they have um, have uh, different batteries uh, for different components that you need. They have coin cell batteries, um, conductive fabric. They have um, little spools of conductive thread, large spools. Um, so if you can think of anything that you might be able to use, Spark Fun's one of the resources you could use to buy. Also, there's Adafruit. Um, they also make which is compatible with um, Arduino software. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So here, so you'll see most of the similar components so that, you know, they have the little holes that you can sew into. Um, they also have LEDs. They call them sequins, I think. Let's see if I can find them. Sequins. There we go, LED sequins. So here, um, that's, so exactly the pretty much exactly the same. Um, I think they're cheap. This is the only item I found that was cheaper on mm -hmm. how to fruit than Spark on pretty much all components for exactly the same price, um, other than these LED sequins. Um, I think they're a little cheaper. Um, all the components list that I have in this Excel are from Spark on. It's easier for me to I just go to one source. <laughs> okay. um, so that's where you can get components. Some instructional support. Um, is learn.sparkfun.com, and they have an e-textiles, just um, cool projects that you can do. So I want to show this page. Um, if you surf this page, you'll see tons of interesting, cool things that you can do with e-textiles and wearables. So, you know, how to make light up silk corsages. You have a wedding coming up and you want to make corsages for. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That'd, be, cool. that'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, oh, that's definitely. Friends, yeah. 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 And, you know, an entrepreneurial um, kind of opportunity for those that, you know, if they really like this and, you know, that's something you know, would be interesting for someone to do. Um, Plush Monster, um, this is one that um, our Spark Fund makes. And you can buy a kit just like the Firefly. Um, so it's all it's pre-cut um, with the components and the things that you need um, to make this project. Um, also, some uh, other projects, the mushrooms. There's lots of resources, and they also have some of the instructions here as well. So this is a 
pretty good resource for you. Um, the the creator, um, Michelle, I can't remember the name. Yeah. Bug, bug, yeah. Yeah. Um, she helped write a book, um, So Electric, and so this is her. This is the source for that. They do have a couple like bookmark book light, which I thought was cool. Um, definitely ties in with the um, reading and libraries, and it just uses two Ellis components. Doesn't like to read under the covers at night. Yeah. <laughs> so. So you can find your book. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool project. Um, they um, they don't have all the instructions in this. They they suggest you um, get the book. Um, I think this one had all the. There's one or two of them that had all the instructions. Um, but for the most part, so so electric, um, the book um, would be a great resource to have if you're planning on some of these, and so it tells you everything that you would need for the project. Um, some Google keywords, just sewable circuits, Lily, Lily Pad, wearables. If you included those in a search query, you would find um, most of the top. The first page would have most of the links that would um, pertain to what you wanted. Um, we do have a website um, for our WearTech curriculum. Um, we could go there. It's not but, populated yet. So. <laughs> so we're still working on materials to put on there. So right. it is a live link, so it does take you there. It's just um, it, there's not anything on it. Um, and so you notice that there's an H at the end, um, even though uh, we spell WearTech without the H. Um, but that is a, a live link, and it would work. Also, um, this, she helped. Um, this lady helped create some of the components. Um, she also has a book called Textile Messages, um, which is another great resource for you um, for projects, um, tips on how to use the, um, the thread, um, other great, lots of good information. It's called Textile Messages. So, so any questions on that? that Covered that. I don't know if that was um, too fast. Yeah. Or, oh no, that's good. good. Um, does anybody have any questions? If you do, type them into your GoToWebinar interface, just in the questions section there, and we can grab them. And um, I can uh, pass them on. But nothing came in while okay. you were talking, so go ahead and if they do, yeah. I'll let you. Cool. Um, so now, just moving on to um, some five eight projects. Um, oh, and, okay. We did have one question. Oh. Um, is there any fire danger? with these, like this electronics and lights and things on fabric. I see there's some on your shirt there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Are you afraid of going up in flames? Uh, no. <laughs> we've, uh, we, we built those monsters in Nebraska City last year as a, as a pilot project. Mm -hmm. And we did have, yeah, we did have wires crossed. That he, it heated up enough that it melted the belt, oh. but there was no fire. No. So, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I don't believe there would be a fire, but I would not. Purposely short, short circuit. Right. It's so only when you're if you're happy to short circuit it by accident. Right. That's when something might get heated up. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. I hope I'm not making anybody yeah, sick. Sally's showing I'm trying to show you the monster, monster. with the eyes lit up. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell, but honest, they really are lit up. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. Yeah. Now we can see it. Oh yeah. Oh, he's scary now. <laughs> <That's> scary. <laughs> he's, well, if you bring him closer, I think, I think then it gets scarier. The the <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> so, yes, the only part of the injury would be in that case. Don't, you don't get your wires crossed and, you should, and nothing yeah. really heats up right. at all. Right. And you're only, you know, you're working with 3 volts or 6 volts of electricity, mm -hmm. um, so um, potential danger is not very high. Um, so for 5.8 middle level um, books, so we were thinking kind of a scene from a book. This is one I didn't have a chance to make, so you have, you know, oh, yeah. so there you can imagine having an LED or two in an LO circle if they wanted to make this or, or paint, use paint to, you know, create this. You know, when Harry Potter calls his Patronus to save himself um, and uh, his uncle. So that's one idea. Um, and then maybe, you know, Little House on the Prairie. Um, you know, with them, something like this that a uh, moon would light up or something like that. So, um, kind of thinking for the middle level and the high school level, if you know they read a book and you know they wanted to prove it and they wanted to make a project, it would be a good opportunity to make a scene from that book or something that um, a theme that was from that book that they would be able to do. So, just, just a couple ideas. Um, this one, nonfiction, um, cells for kids. Um, by Dr. Singh. Um, 
is good. Um, so here's a picture of the, so notice I used a lot more components um, on this one. Um, same concept with the, so each one of these is done in parallel, um, but I did make two circuits off of both of these and use two switches. So uh, I just upped the difficulty by using these components. So here um, Brad will show these. Uh, I was thinking during this, uh, if they read this book, th this book talks a little bit about plant cells, but mostly about animal cells, um, that they, there are some similarities between the plants and uh, plants and animal cells, like they both have nuclei, um, they both have mitochondria, so some similarities, so that's why I use the same colors, um, and so if they wanted to reference, red is the nucleus um, on both of them, they could show that. Uh, the other thing that I uh, showed this to Ann O'Connor, our crystal specialist, that if you notice when Brad presses both buttons, um, they draw on electricity, um, so not all of them light up. So the red and the green are the lowest um, draws of that electricity, so they will light up with the least amount of electricity, where pink and blue and white um, they have a higher voltage drop. So that's why when you press them both, um, they don't light up. Um, as much. As much. Oh, so, so I'm using all six volts uh, of that. Barely. <laughs> yeah. So that's a nonfiction idea for the middle level. And this was one I made. I'm just using the components, um, no instructable or anything like that for this one. Um, for 912 projects, again, uh, seen from a book, so grade level appropriate. Older kids might um, enjoy the, the themes and the you know, information from the giver. Uh, you might have kids interested in The Hunger Games or Divergent, um, any of the vampire books by um, Miss Mead. Um, those are kind of big um, with my um, nieces and nephews that are in ninth and 10th grade. They enjoy those. Um, so kind of an idea from there. Um, for the 912 projects, we were thinking this is where we might be able to do a little bit of the wearable, a um, little more application within the wearable um, the kind of arena. So um, I didn't want to call it bedazzling, but maybe e-dazzling, uh, <laughs> some, something that's already made. So clothes, just adding components to it or um, doing something like that. So definitely, you know, this is where I think those higher level kids, um, would be able to do work with the wearable technologies and add them onto something wearable. Um, we've talked about um, how the felt projects they're 2D, where you know you're just going kind of sewing one level. But when you, anytime you're doing a shirt or a hat, you kind of have to think about what's going on the front and the back, and you're you know kind of have to go with the contours of the fabric. So that adds an element of difficulty. Um, so that's where maybe not doing that with you know K5. Um, but as they get older, they might might be able to understand that better and, and work a little better with it. Um, we do have a question about that. What about washing the clothes afterwards? So Spark Fun, uh, all but one that I know of, um, they're washable. They're hand washable, um, and so you can wash them and uh, hand wash and dry like normal. So you are able to. Um, I'm wearing a shirt. The camera that that works. Thank you. I have a NASA shirt oh, that I e-dazzled. So the NASA sorry. emblem, and then wherever the stars were, I put an LED. Um, so it's a, and then I used the Lily Twinkle, so similar to the Firefly in a jar, where they kind of blink like stars. So that's where. So this is a project that they could e-dazzle, and um, for so even everything, including that big. One in the bottom that can all just go through the wash, or you said a hand yes. wash, right? Yep. Not in the washing machine. Not in the washing machine. No, nope. they recommend um, a hand washing. Okay. I would do remove the power source, so it does have a six volt battery. Um, Don't wash your batteries. And so you, you take the you take the batteries out and you can wash them. There is one a buzzer um, that plays tones that um, you can't wash, and they're they say they're trying to figure out how to make it washable, um, but that's one that you wouldn't be able to. So I put that on a hat. Um, and I have a picture of it, um, so if you can't see this. So here's the hat, and I, I turned it on. So um, yeah. this hat just highlights a lot of the components that we use in our wearable technologies curriculum. So here's the twinkling. Um, it's on. And then I have an RGB going here. And then 
<laughs> so I have I have a light sensor on it, so when it's dark, like it is now, it will play a tone. But while I'm out in the sunlight or oh, normal nice. lights, it won't play because it would get annoying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think. Constantly, yeah. <laughs> um, so this one in, in required a little more work in some computer programming. I didn't include a lot of projects for computer programming or much information, particularly on this one. Um, in the future, or if they wanted to look at that, they'd have to um, find Arduino mm -hmm. and program that to Arduino. Yeah. Cool. I thought that was beyond the scope of <laughs> today's presentation. So now that the light's on, I left it on. Now that the light's are on, it should not play music. So yeah. now it's just now it's flashing a light, but no music. So there I had to um, program it a little bit more, a little more difficulty. So that, um, that thing that beeped, the really buzzer, um, it's not washable, they said. So I didn't want to put that on the shirt. Uh, I don't want to smell bad. So um, I put it on something that I wouldn't have to wash every day. Or um, yeah. so, so I would say if you're going to wash your clothes, your circuits need to be pretty robust. So right. um, when you run that thread, you would run two or three times through your circuits. Make sure it stays. Right, because so it'll fall. stretch. As you wash, it'll stretch. And then they do recommend putting glue on the back, so that would help it stay. You know, if you use some of that fabric glue on the back. Um, I did on this one. Um, I wanted it done fast. And how does that uh, feel on your skin? Uh, it, for me, it kind of itches. So I have an undershirt on. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it does kind of scratch. Um, yeah. So I did. I did put on the undershirt. So it might work well on like a sweatshirt or right. So yeah. you're right over, yeah. Yeah. over. And I'll show you some of some of those projects for some other um, how. Students might be able to dazzle um, some projects. We have one other question. Mm -hmm. um, how long? Oh, well, how about using the metallic thread in the sewing machine? Is it could, would it be able to work through a sewing machine, or is it better to do it by hand? That's a lot That's of bending. That's something for and yeah. 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 Um, The thread is very it's coarse. It's a very coarse. It's. It's kind of rough. Um, but it feels very similar to thread. Um, I'm not sure. But it's pretty it is kind bendy. of brittle. It's, it's, is it? Okay. Yeah. But it is. It's I would just like say, I would say so maybe, because um, it feels like regular thread. If you say it's brittle, and it might, because there's a lot of pulling and tension and stuff right. in when you're feeding yeah. this thread through. It might not stand up to that kind of thing if it is kind might of. Might depend on how expensive your sewing machine is. That's true too. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you Google it, I'm sure somebody's tried it. Um, there's yeah. lots of projects out there where it seemed like they did some intensive sewing. Mm -hmm. So um, if they did it all by hand, that's cool. But they may have used the machine. I, I'm not sure. I'm not. Good question. And how long, on average, do the batteries last? Like, how often do you need to replace? I mean, you're not having these run constantly. Obviously, you're turning them on and off, mm -hmm. but. Um, the six volt batteries that were in the hat and the shirt, um, they're lithium batteries, so they recharge. So you plug okay. it in and they're rechargeable. The oh. three volt batteries, the coin cell batteries are, are not rechargeable. Um, five, six hours? Yeah, it just depends on how many LEDs, how yeah. much you're pulling through the battery. So the more you pull, the less long they will last. Right. Right. Uh, so here's a picture of the hat. So. Here's just the, the component. So this is just like the um, Firefly um, setup. So I, and those are the instructions I followed for that Firefly. Um, I followed the exact same instructions for this set over here. Um, this is the lily pad at Mega 320. I have it linked in uh, the Excel document if you wanted to look at this one. Um, and then here's a light sensor. So this, um, I have it set. So I can program this component so it has some lines of code in it. It keeps checking this, and when it is dark, um, it will play something out of the buzzer. And then here's a tricolor LED. So this, um, you can mix colors, uh, RGB, so you can have pink. You, you can choose the color, but you have to program it um, to tell what colors. So, and that's another component um, that you'd be able to use. And again, that's on the Excel document under the hat project. I just put all the components that I had. So the tricolor light sensor. So here's those bits. This lithium battery, it's a little more expensive. It is rechargeable. Um, so you'll have those um, to reference if you're interested. 
No, here it is. Um, so they have uh, um, instructions on and a lot of cool ideas at instructables.com, and um, they tag all the all their things. And so um, with the lily pad tag, um, they have tons of cool ideas. And um, if you want to do some of these, use that um, board that you program. Most of these have copy and paste code. So like this one, which I want to do on my sweater, um, they, um, it's, so it's the light sensor, so it's pretty much the exact same thing as the hat. So when the, this um, kid pops up his collar, it senses the light, and it plays a song. Um, and so the code that they put into this, um, it's copy and paste. The instructions are pretty good. They're um, user submitted, so they might not be as clear as SparkFun, um, but they go through the instructions pretty pretty clearly, and so um, they show all um, how to do that. Um, for Arduino, um, this user um, submitted the code. So they even have sewing instructions. Um, so if you're nervous about the circuitry, um, a lot of the instructables will include uh, a sketch, or, um, kind of a model for that. Um, here they tested with alligator clips. Suggest getting some alligator clips. I have it on the Excel sheet. Um, just to test out, you know, so that way the kids can practice with the um, circuitry. And then here's the code in the Arduino program. It's free, um, Arduino. Um, and so if you go on their site, um, you'll be able to find it and download it. It's all free. Um, you can bedazzle your Christmas sweater for next year. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have an ugly sweater or a beautiful contest, sweater, yeah. you can add lots of annoying music if you want. <laughs> So vis visually ugly and auditorily ugly <laughs> as well. However you wanted to do that, um, but that would be something you could um, do. Um, mix and match, be creative with um, some parts of code. Oops. So the instructables, so um, lots of different ideas. Um, um, from you know, turn signal suspenders, so sewing it into suspenders. Um, had some cool, um, I think this was a sweater as well. Mm -hmm. So putting this, uh, sewing a lock in here and sewing some LEDs. This one uses the Twinkle. Um, and then they also programmed a song, the, the Elsa um, Let It Go um, chorus in this one, <laughs> uh, which was really cool. Um, so lots of cool ideas on Instructables with the tag um, Lilypad. So all these use the Lilypad components. So lots of different ideas. One of my friends made the project. This one. Uh, he's a motorcycle rider, and it's a turn signal jacket. And okay. so when he raises up, uh, one, like his right arm, lights light up down the down the arm, indicating that he's going that way. That so and it's in a leather coat. Is, yeah. yeah, that's a great so idea. A friend of a friend, uh, <laughs> but it was pretty cool. Uh, I wish he was my friend, so I'd be like, can I borrow your coat? <laughs> can I go bike riding next, just so, just so I can look cool. So um, musical club, just amazing prop um, ideas on here um, on Instructables. Um, so those are the, um, that previous slide was the kind of the upper level projects that you would be able to um, look at and do. So um, lower level, I would keep it simple and maybe not do wearable, um, just using the e-textiles. Um, and then adjust number of components per level um, and, you know, some of the projects I use, I used uh, fabric paint. So not everything has to be sewn. Um, you could, you know, just add one component and then they, you know, create something around that one component. Um, fabric paint also um, just colored thread if they wanted to use. Um, they'd be able to do that um, for embroidery. There's a special name for that thread, isn't there? Gloss. Gloss. Yep. Embroidery um, gloss. Yeah. So using embroidery gloss um, would be one way to add some uh, creativity and color that. Maybe if they're not ready to complete huge circuits, they'd be able to add some color and, and some creativity. Um, and then I think a lot of these projects and a lot of ideas are easily connected to literature. So um, definitely um, find that throughout your libraries. Um, so to wrap up, um, we also wanted to show kind of a relatively inexpensive, so relatively inexpensive um, idea for kind of an introduction to circuitry um, and using some components. Yeah, to finish. <laughs> so paper circuits, um, 
There, they use in the example that we show you. There's other resources on online if you say paper circuits um, that um, they use copper tape, so it's conductive, and you essentially make the same. Um, you know, you make a circuit going from positive to negative of a um, LED. So here's uh, so, and this is from Instructables again. Um, so here, the use of copper tape and um, and an LED, so they easily. Um, you know, connect the batteries clipped under here. Um, that was the finished project. Um, that's kind of what it looks like here. Notice they, in, they indicated whether it was positive or negative. So that would maybe even easier for kids that who can't be, yes. do, yep. aren't as dexterous to do the sewing with exactly. a needle and yep. just have them tape it. And definitely, uh, just this last Monday, um, we were at the uh, Project Lead the Way conference, and we had a bunch of students. Um, come into ours when we did paper circuits with uh, the teachers that were there for Project Lead the Way. And um, the, the kids didn't even follow the instructions. They were doing other stuff and <laughs> seeing how they could, you know, move the thread around and make multiple circuits. And so they immediately grabbed onto the simplicity and uh, were creative with what they could do. Um, SparkFun has a couple projects. Um, one of the ones we're doing is uh, a lotus flower, and that's one we did this last Monday. It's a pop-up one. And unfortunately, I didn't get mine done all the way. <laughs> we can still zoom in it's on it. It's a work in progress. It is. Oops. Well, it doesn't light up. No, it doesn't. So, no. Yeah. no, it doesn't. No, I didn't finish the circuit. So. You'll notice I have all the links. So here's the e-dazzling instructables, and um, here's the one from Spark. And so it's really cool. It would look cool if it was done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of it would look idea. something like this. It would light up. About how much time so, does it take to complete that type of a project? Uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, pretty simple. So here's one we did for Valentine's Day. Uh, Dr. Melander did this one. and. Uh, I think Yoda won, and so it's Yoda with the sword. Uh, and so just connected those in parallel. So you're definitely using some connections to uh, concepts of circuitry, parallel um, circuits. And so some good vocabulary kids would be able to use. So this would be something they could make a card for their mother for Mother's Day or something? Yeah, right. And that could has, so here's the... Part fun one, so light up Valentine's Day. This one's a little more complicated. Um, this one, you know, you can make little pop-up cards. Father's Day card um, lights up. So um, some use it. This uses the lily pad uh, that we showed earlier, the, the switch. So this, the um, person can turn it off and on um, using some of those. And we use mostly these with the um, LEDs. Um, but they do, SparkFun does have some that you uh, can use like a speaker, you know, those cards you can buy for, that have the song mm -hmm. on them or whatever. So you could put um, a little speaker in there or something like that with these components. Um, I think I put the lotus flower. Um, Googling uh, SparkFun lotus flower card. Um, and so this is yeah, the one uh, Brad showed you without the LED because I didn't get it done. Um, so it has, um, and again, SparkFun instructions are fantastic. Um, the instructables, the instructions for this, um, right here, the, this Lotus Paper Circuit, the PDF, the instructions are very clear how to make it, um, where to, um, this paper here has where the instructions are and where the tape goes. So a lot of support for anyone doing this that might not that might be unsure of how the circuit works or whatever. So this one has a lot of support um, for you um, with the PDF that's easily downloadable and printable. Um, here's all the components. Um, in the Excel spreadsheet, I included that one down here, paper circuits. So um, I tried to find the cheapest one, pop, uh, copper conductive tape. Um, that, uh, it's not very wide. They make it in you know five millimeter to you know pretty uh, wide. Copper tape um, projects that um, most of these that we saw had the thin copper tape. Just some small LEDs 
um, three millimeter ones, and then um, some smaller 12 millimeter coins without batteries. They're not bigger. They're not a little larger. So that's where the, this project is definitely cheap. You can definitely scale up pretty big and mm -hmm. um, have materials ready for anybody that would come into the library and wanted to do uh, a flower or a project. Uh, oh, some keywords, um, just paper circuit, tape, LED, so adding those components. Um, if you just do paper circuit, um, you'll get some um, like the, the pins that have conductive ink. You'll, have, you'll find a lot more of those than the ones with the, the tape. So adding tape in your um, query will help find uh, those projects that use copper tape if you wanted to. Um, and then LED as well. There are some other. Um, some company makes, uh, which I just found, uh, Pan told me about, that they make them with um, sticker LEDs. So you can, so it's actually a sticker with a little LED, so not one with the little prongs on it. It's pretty cool. Um, here's my contact information. Um, if you have any questions, you could email me, or if you want to contact any of these fine ladies here, um, and they forward me a question or something, I'd try to help you out. Does anybody have any other questions? Uh, type them into your question section to your GoToWebinar interface. We've asked all the ones that were typed in before. Um, I was just going to ask, um, you were saying that some of the, the tape for the paper, some of it's wider than others. Is it more powerful because it's wider, or is it just, is, is there a reason to have wider versus narrower tape? Um, if you, I, I don't think so. It just depends on the application, you, you know. Um, but as for conductive power, it, it wouldn't matter. Um, you know, if you wanted to design a different project that had you know, thicker tape, um, it would be really easy. There's a couple of YouTube videos where a lady shows you how to make corners and actually do art with the copper tape um, by trimming it a little bit and making wavy lines. Um, just using that Google um, query or search query, you can find the YouTube video that um, a lady explains really well. Oh, on how to make some Because the copper tape, the entire thing is conductive. It's not just like some line of thread right. through the center or right. something, so you can cut it down and yep. bend it and do what you need to with it. Yep. Interesting. Any other questions or comments? Or no, I just really appreciate you two coming in and giving yeah, us an opportunity to share this. Yeah. This, is, this sounds wonderful. I've already, by Memorial Day, I'm going to have my own hat done. <laughs> <laughs> I'll share it. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, got people's minds you know, turning, I'm already thinking of, you know, part of that, of Christmas ornaments, that how can I make something with, like, Rudolph's let, nose let right, lights yeah. up or something like that, so. Let's see, I'm at the paper level. <laughs> I'll, I'll get up to the actual sewing a little further down. I, I'm ready for some cards. Some we'll cards, yeah. See about doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, well it doesn't look like any other last minute urgent questions come in, that's fine. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So uh, thank you very much guys for coming in and sharing. This was, I remember when we did do the coding one, we did a lot of BB robotics and there was this and a few other things. And it was all very, yeah, like you said, you got people really interested in it. So I'm glad we got to come on and do a lot more specific on this one. Um, maybe with some of the robotics or Legos, I love all the Lego stuff. I always watch follow all that when all those competitions are going on. <laughs> so thank you very much guys, everyone. Thank you everyone for attending um, and come this live this morning. Let's see here. I'm going to go to our So that will wrap us up for this week's episode of Encompass Live on the stage. It's Earth Day, yes, of course. Um, so that wraps up for this week's edition of Encompass Live. It has been recorded, so it will be available on our website later this afternoon, along with the PowerPoint presentation that was there. All the documents were our Excel, yeah, Excel. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. I was just going to say, there's the search window up there, mm -hmm. and if you search coding, that will take you to our what we have now for our um, page that has the coding ideas on it, but also some other things that we'll be expanding with this information now, and then we're also looking at an adult coding page that we haven't quite finished or put anywhere yet, kind of like your page that doesn't have right. anything <laughs> yet, but it will. Right. So uh, I just wanted people to know about that as well. Here's some of the spark fun that you were talking about too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, this is what came out of that first session that we did back in January. Right. Yeah.
people might want to And in the there. middle of the page there, uh, oh, yes. there's, or at the top, I, I, right, right there, it says ask a question about coding opportunities for the library or share a coding success story. Um, I really um, encourage you, I'm, I'm hearing success stories when you're calling me with a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and you know, it kind of balances it out, but if you call me or, or a concern or something that you need a, a question answered, but then you tell me about your coding opportunities you've had at your library. Uh, we'd really appreciate having it documented too, you know, so we can uh, look back at it or share your resource and what you've done with another library. So. And if you do any of the paper circuits or the wearable yeah. technologies, please let us know right. any about of those too. We'd love topic. to gather yeah. that information. And, and who knows, you might be on Encompass Live sometime talking about what you did at your library. Yeah. Taking these resources and ideas that we just gave you today and actually doing some sort of project or event. So let us know. But and I might come help. help. So this is Holly. So <laughs> <laughs> let me know. Yeah, you want Holly helping you more than you want me helping you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so we're going to take you away. No, no problem. That's good to show that. Yeah. So yes, that will wrap it up for this week's show. It has been recorded, and down here, this is our Encompass Live page. Right over here underneath our upcoming shows is a link to all of our archives where, like I said, we'll have all the documents, PowerPoint presentation, links to all the links. We put them in our delicious account. We'll put all the documents up there as well, along with recordings. You'll be able to watch all of this later. Um, these are our upcoming shows, so please do um, sign up for any of them. I hope you join us next week when it's our Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, uh, last Wednesday, Wednesday of the month. I always say Friday for some reason, but it's the last Wednesday of the month. <laughs> uh, our tech talk, um, where he's going to bring have um, talk about wrecking the library, but for a good reason. Um, uh, how to host a tech take apart? Um, this is the library, uh, Martin County Library System in Florida. They do where they bring the teens and they actually learn about how things work by taking them apart, taking apart the computers and you see your VCRs, anything, and learn about the inter internal workings of them all. So um, that will be our Encompass Live for next week. So please do join us for that. And if you are on um, Facebook, uh, Encompass Live, we are on Facebook as well. Go ahead and like our page there. We post about upcoming shows. We do reminders when today sh this. Wednesday show is ready to start. We put up posts about when the recordings are available. So um, do go ahead and like us there. Other than that, we are wrapped up for this morning. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.